In addition to the six classes of airspace already mentioned, other types of airspace exist which fall into a separate category. This airspace is called special use airspace. Special use airspace consists of areas wherein certain activities are being conducted that must be confined to that area or wherein limitations are imposed upon other aircraft that are not a part of those activities or both. For regulatory special use airspace, there are prohibited areas and restricted areas. Non-regulatory special use airspace consists of warning areas, military operating areas, alert areas, and controlled firing areas. Prohibited areas exist for security or other reasons associated with national welfare, where aircraft are not permitted to fly. This airspace starts at the surface and extends up to a specified altitude. On sectional charts, this airspace is depicted with a blue hashed shape. Inside the shape will be the letter P, followed by a series of numbers acting as the identifier of that particular area. Restricted areas contain the existence of unusual, often invisible hazards to aircraft, such as artillery firing, aerial gunnery, or guided missiles. Because of this, aircraft are not allowed to fly within the area unless that area is not in use or permission has been received from the designated controlling agency. Unless otherwise depicted, this airspace starts from the surface and extends up to a designated altitude. Sectional charts depict this airspace in the same manner as prohibited areas using a blue hashed shape. However, the identifier now starts with the letter R instead of P. Warning areas contain activity that may be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. They exist to warn non-participating pilots of potential danger, but do not prevent or limit other aircraft from operating within that area. These areas exist over domestic and international waters as close as three nautical miles from the coast. Unless otherwise depicted, this airspace starts from the surface and extends up to a designated altitude. They are again depicted on sectional charts with blue hash lines, this time starting with the letter W. Military operating areas, or MOAs, contain activities such as air combat tactics, air intercepts, aerobatics, formation flying, and low-altitude tactics. They exist to separate certain military training from IFR traffic. Whether or not an MOA is in use, BFR traffic may still fly through the area. However, extreme caution should be used when flying through an active MOA. Unless otherwise depicted, MOAs typically start at a designated altitude and extend up to, but not including, flight level 180. Sectional charts depict these areas using magenta hashed lines. Instead of a numbered identifier like other previously mentioned areas, MOAs are given names. Alert areas are used to inform pilots of areas that may contain a high volume of pilot training or an unusual type of aerial activity. Non-participating aircraft should use extra caution when operating within these areas. These areas are depicted on sectional charts using magenta hashed lines, but use the previously mentioned numeric identifier, this time starting with the letter A. Controlled firing areas, or CFAs, contain activities which, if were not conducted in a controlled environment, could be hazardous to aircraft. CFAs are different from other hazardous areas due to the fact that their activities are immediately suspended when a non-participating aircraft appears to be approaching the area. Because of this, they do not get charted, as they do not require pilots to alter their course. This last category of airspace contains various auxiliary types of airspace that are each unique and don't fall into any other classification of airspace. We will be discussing airport advisory areas, temporary flight restrictions, air defense identification zones, military training routes, VFR flyways, VFR corridors, VFR transition routes, terminal radar service areas, national security areas, and finally, U.S. wildlife refuges, parks, and forest service areas. Airport advisory areas are areas surrounding a non-towered airport on which a flight service station is located. The flight service station can provide advisories over the CTAF frequency pertaining to wind and weather information and even basic traffic advisories. Remember that the FSS is only advising about traffic, 
and it's up to the PIC to maintain safe and adequate traffic separation from other aircraft. Temporary flight restrictions, or TFRs, are short-term blocks of airspace used to temporarily prevent or limit non-participating aircraft from entering that area. These could be used for such things as to protect people or property in the air or on the surface from specific hazards or situations, or to provide a safe environment for things such as disaster relief or shuttle launches, or to protect the president, vice president, or any other public figure. Depending on the impact of the TFR, a notice to airmen or NOTAM may be issued to alert pilots that a TFR is in effect. Pilots are responsible for being aware of and complying with any TFRs that are or will be in effect during their flights. Contact the local flight service station for the most up-to-date information by calling 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Air Defense Identification Zones, or ADAs, serve as the boundary between domestic U.S. airspace and international airspace. They are located over the borders of neighboring countries and along the coastlines. Sectional charts depict these with a magenta line and dots. All aircraft entering the U.S. airspace from outside the country must provide identification prior to entry. Generally, aircraft must file an IFR or Defense VFR flight plan for any operations that enter or exit an ADAS. As part of filing your flight plan with Flight Service, you will need to provide the estimated time you plan on passing through the ADAS. In addition, the aircraft must have an operating Mode C transponder and the pilot must establish and maintain two-way radio communications with ATC in order to make periodic position reports. Failure to follow these rules may result in your aircraft being intercepted by U.S. security. Military training routes, or MTRs, are routes around the country where military aircraft practice maneuvers and high-speed operations, sometimes at very low levels. Generally, MTRs are established below 10,000 feet MSL with aircraft operating at speeds in excess of 250 knots. On sectional charts, MTRs are depicted by gray shaded lines. The names of an MTR start with either VR or IR, which conveys whether the route is flown VFR or IFR. The route number tells pilots what altitudes the route is flown at. MTRs with no segment above 1,500 feet AGL shall be identified by four number characters. For example, IR1206 or VR1207. MTRs that include one or more segments above 1,500 feet AGL will be identified by two or three digit characters. For example, IR24 or VR318. A VFR flyway is defined as a general flight path for use by pilots in planning flights into, out of, through, or near complex terminal airspace. These routes do not require an ATC clearance and are not a specific course that is flown, but merely a route that will keep the aircraft clear of the Class Bravo airspace. These flyways can be found on the back of the terminal area chart. A VFR corridor is defined as airspace through Class B airspace with defined vertical and lateral boundaries in which aircraft may operate without an ATC clearance or communication with air traffic control. Essentially, a corridor is like a hole through the Class B airspace. With the increase of air traffic throughout the country, VFR corridors have not been used recently in the national airspace system. A VFR transition route is a published route through Class B airspace to accommodate VFR traffic flying through the area. Before flying a VFR transition route and entering Class B airspace, a pilot must receive clearance from ATC to do so. These routes, found on the terminal area chart, list specific frequencies, altitudes, and courses to fly. VFR transition routes are indicated on the chart by double magenta lines with an arrow indicating the direction of the routes. A Terminal Radar Service Area, or TERSA, is a relic of the old national airspace system. It is essentially a Class D airport surrounded by optional or voluntary Class C type radar services. The key difference is that this radar service is recommended to be used but not required in order to land at the primary Class D airport. 
Terses are depicted by black lines on a sectional chart similar to the look of a Class C airport, but the dimensions widely vary between each individual airport. National security areas are established at locations where there is a requirement for increased security and safety of ground facilities. These areas are depicted on the sectional chart by dashed magenta lines. While the airspace above these areas is not restricted, pilots are requested to voluntarily avoid flying through the depicted NSA. The areas above U.S. wildlife refuges, parks, and forest service areas are depicted by a blue line and dotted border and are usually labeled with the name of the area. Pilots are requested to maintain a minimum altitude of 2,000 feet above the surface of these areas. 